There are a ton of tutorials out there on how to cast your own custom dice, but there aren't a lot of tutorials out there on how to design your own custom dice. And honestly, those tutorials that show you how to design dice, you kind of have to be like a math genius to figure out. There are many reasons why somebody might want to make their own dice. Maybe you have a board game that has non-conventional dice and you need to make a replacement for it. Or maybe you want to make a custom set of dice to commemorate a D&D character. Maybe you're a business or an event and you want to make a custom set of dice with your logo on it. So I'm going to show you quickly and easily how to make your own custom dice designs in Blender. My name is Nash and I like to design board games and accessories for board games and war games and RPGs and all that sort of stuff. So if that's the sort of thing you're into, make sure you hit like and subscribe. Let's get making. So the first thing we have to do is we have to make a design. You can use any software you want to make the design. I'm going to use Photoshop. I really like Canva for this sort of thing. It has a huge library of graphics that would look perfect on a die. And actually I got a, a dragon here from Canva. This is one of their, one of their graphics. And I'm going to go ahead and use that. And what you can see here is I have laid out the, the things I want to put on each of the sides of my D6. So I'm going to do a D6 just for the sake of simplicity. Some things that we need to do when we make the design. So first of all, we need to have a black background. And everything that we want to be indented into the die or engraved into the die needs to be white. So once you have your design, we're going to go ahead and we're going to save it. And we're going to scoot on over to Blender. Once we're in Blender, we're going to create our die. We're going to go up to Mesh. Since we're making a D6, we can just make a cube. If you want to make more complicated shapes, and the process is the same whether we're making a D20 or a D6 or D4, doesn't matter. Um, you can go into Edit and Preferences and type in extra, extra objects here and make sure you select the extra objects. Once that's selected, we can add and mesh and we can add a math function and uh, I think it's a regular solid here and while well, there's a d4 down here in the corner we can make all sorts of basically dice <laughs> so, and here's the d20 so if you wanted to make any other shape you just use that add-on it's free it just comes with Blender, it's just not enabled right from the I'm going to add my cube here. Sweet. Now we have to do some things to prepare our cube for our design. We're going to go over and we're going to add a modifier. There's this little wrench icon and add a modifier. So first thing we're going to do, we're going to add a multi-resolution modifier. Basically, if we look at this, if we look at this in a wireframe, each side is just one big square. So imagine that like a TV, if you just had one pixel on your TV, it would just be one color. You wouldn't be able to see an image. So we got to increase the amount of squares we have so that we can put an image into it. So what we're going to do is we're going to use the multi-resolution modifier. And this is going to virtually increase how many squares we have in each of these squares. And when you come down here, do not hit subdivide because if you hit subdivide, this will happen. And that's not what we're going to undo that. We want to make sure we hit simple. And all the way down here on the bottom, we can say that it went from six faces to 24 faces. So now there's four times as many squares in the image. And every time we hit this, it's gonna it's gonna quadruple. So we hit it again, and now we're at 96 faces. And we're gonna hit it again on 384 faces. Basically, I'm gonna keep doing this until I get to a million faces. There we go. 
we're at 1.5 million faces right now. That's at nine. Um, if you have a potato for a computer, that's that might hurt your computer. I'm running a relatively generic uh, gaming PC. So if you can play Baldur's Gate 3, you're gonna be just okay uh, pushing that up to a level nine. And we're not doing anything super complicated. Next, we're gonna add another modifier. And we're gonna add a modifier called Displace. And that's gonna just make things all wonky. Don't worry, we are going to fix that. So we're gonna come down here in the corner and we're gonna select where it says local, we're gonna hit UV. And then we're also gonna right here when it says new, we're gonna hit new. Okay, well that's a little bit better. When it says mid-level here, we're just gonna type in a zero. And when it says strength, we're actually gonna do negative one. All right, sweet. So what we did here is basically the multi-res is making the pixels and the displacement is going to tell the pixels what to display. You can see here there is a checker mark next to the texture and that corresponds with the texture panel. So we can go to the texture panel. And as you can see, we don't have any textures in here. Well, we can open the one that we just, uh, we just made, number one here. Open that up and voila, there we go. It is completely done. We accomplished everything we wanted to. There are numbers in the die and they, uh, they look perfect. That's the end of the tutorial. We'll see you guys. No, I'm just kidding. We obviously have a little bit of work we have to do, but we can see that the images are in there. And what you can see is that everything that is white got pushed in. What we're going to do is we're going to go up in this very top corner. We're going to go to UV editing right here. There we go. So what this is showing us, this is showing us how if we flatten this object, this is what it would look like. And if we go up here to where there's a little picture icon, we select our picture. We can see how that matches up with the object that we have. So um, it's it's all over the place. None of these squares line up. So it might be, you might feel like you can just grab a hold of this. Up here, there are buttons that let you select different types of things. I'm using this one right here and that lets me select uh, each panel. And so now all I have to do is move the panel to the right uh-oh, see this, we're all wonky now. We want to keep these as squares. We're all wonky, that's not going to work. So we have to do one more thing. We have to come into the this side over here. We got to make sure that everything is highlighted orange, everything's selected. We are in edit mode just in case somehow you got out of edit mode. We can go to the UV tab up here. We're going to mark scene. And basically what that's doing is that's telling Blender that each one of these sides, we're going to cut out. So we're going to cut each one of these sides out separately. Now we can hit UV, unwrap. That changed things up a little bit. All right, now we're cooking with fire. So we're going to select the top face here. Uh, once again, I'm going to go up in this corner here and use the face these are little ways of selecting everything. I'm gonna select the face. So we can see the top face. That's the side face, that's the top face, it's right here. So when I click on this, when I hold down the G button, I can move that right over the dragon. Sweet. Now let's say we wanna make the dragon bigger in here. So if I went and resized it, I went and resized it here, the problem is, is all the other panels are going to be different sides. So we're going to undo that. We're going to come over here and we're going to select all again. We're going to highlight them all. And we're going to resize. We're going to resize everything all together. All together. So now when I 
just like that. Well, I went too small. Make sure we're clicking in here. I'm going to size up a little bit better. We just want to make sure that all these stay the same size for the sake of it looking good. If we, if we don't do that, then it's not going to look good. All right, sweet. We have the top and it's going to be our dragon icon. Now the bottom one is going to have to be the one. So we can select that. We can go over here, hold down G, and move it over the one and center the one up. Nice and good there. Sweet. Now the side can be a two if we want it to be. Sides can start anywhere. And then we can go over here, and this needs to be a five. So opposite of the two is the five. This one has to be the three. I'm going to center that up. And then the one opposite of that, that has to be the four. Remember, we, we click on this and we hold down G. Center that up there. Okay, and now we can see if our hard work paid off by going up here and switching this to object mode. There we are. We have the designs put in. It's looking pretty good, but we cut, we're cutting in way too deep here. We're gonna go back to the, the wrench where we have our modifiers. We're gonna change the strength here. We're gonna go negative point zero one. That's just a little indent. We might need to go a little bit more. Negative point one. That's looking pretty good. There we go. Now, let's say, see how we got five and four, and then the two and the three are sideways. So let's say we wanted to change that. So the two needs to be rotated counterclockwise, which actually means that we're gonna to have to rotate that square clockwise. So we're gonna go back into edit mode, and then select the two, Rotate the square. We can click on this and hold down R. And if we type in 90, we can go 90 degrees clockwise. And there we go. We matched. We gotta do the same thing over here. So back to edit mode. We select the three. And go over here, select. We're gonna hit R 90. Enter. And you can do these however you want. On bigger dice, it gets more complicated. I've noticed that on a lot of dice though, um, it's hard to see this, but these dice, they're all facing the same way and all facing towards the one. So that's what I did. All right, we are successful. So we need to finish it up. We go over to our modifiers. We can go back to layout here. We go over into our modifiers and we hit apply. We go to the multi-res and we hit apply. Now, now we are official. So when we switch over to edit mode, it's gonna still show us. But what it's showing us are all 1.5 million of these squares. And this area is just big and flat. We don't need all these squares. So basically there's a lot of extra data being saved here. And honestly, the big the slicers like uh, Lychee Slicer and Cura and all those things are gonna freak out over all these. So we're going to reduce the amount of slices we have. And then come over here, we're going to hit decimate. And I like to do maybe 0 0.25. So I'm going to go back into object mode so the computer doesn't crash with uh, 
both OBS and Blender and Photoshop all running at the same time. So we can see that the new face count is about half of what we are. We can maybe go a little bit more. Point one. And this might um, take a long time. So before you do this, save, save your Blender file which, okay, there we are, yeah. So now we're at 298,000, that is perfectly fine. I'm gonna apply that. And take a little bit of time to calculate all that stuff. One eternity later. All right, so now when I go back in edit mode, you can see it's replaced all those squares with a lot bigger triangles, and that is easier for 3D software to figure out. And there we have it. Now I can just export it. Um, actually, before I export, Control A and apply all transforms. And now we're good to go. Right. We can just print this off, and we'll have our own custom dice with our own custom fonts your own custom logo ready to be molded and cast and um, ready for you to show off to all those other people that are using dice molds off of ebay Alright guys, I hope you like this. I look forward to seeing the sort of dice that you guys make. And we'll see you next time.